Hey, this is Kendrick Technology Interpreters. And so today we're gonna to be decompiling an executable to find a hidden password that's stored within. So this is part of the Hack the Box beginner's track, uh, and it's supposed to be an easy challenge, but I'll be honest with you, this is not easy. And so I had a lot of help in the live stream. So first of all, I wanna thank the person in the live stream. By the way, I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash technology underscore interpreters. OXROM, I want to give you a big, huge shout out. He's the one that walked me through how to do this. And so today, because of his information, I'm going to be sharing that with you in the video. If you're doing Hack the Box, I strongly recommend that you subscribe to my channel because I'm walking you through the entire beginner track. I've already created a video series on starting point. And once I finish the beginner track, I'm going to move on to the next one. I give very detailed tutorials and I walk you through every single step. So I'm going to help you to learn everything you need to be a cybersecurity professional, whether a red team or blue team. I'm teaching it all on the channel. If that's of interest to you, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. For this challenge, you have to download the files. So let's go ahead and save this. And by default, Firefox should save it into the downloads folder. So now that we've downloaded the files, let's go to our downloads folder and we'll simply click the little uh, down arrow here and we'll click the folder icon to open it up. And so the first thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and extract those files. And once again, I do things the easy way. You know, some people may like to do it command line, but I'm just going to show you, like when you're beginning, take your time. I'm going to do this. I'm going to uh, extract two and it should give me an option. And I'm just going to make a folder called easy pass. Okay. We'll find the easy pass. All right. And so that's going to be a folder. Actually, I'm not going to do that. Let's just call it easy pass. Let's go pay it. Okay, all right, so we don't have anything, so it didn't extract. So let's go ahead and do this again. Extract, and make sure it didn't extract to my main folder here. Extract to easy pass and extract. Act the box. And let's try it again. Did we get anything? Nothing, okay, interesting. All right, so I'm gonna do this the simple way. I'm gonna take this and drag this into the easy pass folder, move it here. Right click, extract here, hack the box, all our case. All right, and there's easy pass. Really weird that it did that. So now that we've got the file extracted, first thing you wanna do in Linux is you wanna run the file command. So let's move this over and let's make this bigger so you can see it. So you see we got the files right there, but I'll make this terminal a little bit bigger so you can kind of follow along pretty easy. Um, Hope I didn't mess up anything. It looks like I dragged that file, but oh well. So let's make this bigger by pressing control plus plus plus. All right, ls, and we'll go to the, I'm gonna easy pass, so file, easy pass. You always wanna verify that it, what type of file it is. And so what we can see, it says it's P32 executable. It's done on Intel platform for MS Windows. Okay, so this is a Windows executable. So how do we go about running a Windows executable on a Linux operating system. Well, this is what they showed me last night. I knew of these programs, but I never run them before that I know of. So let's go ahead and get into the commands. I've got all the commands installed. So the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need a program called Wine. All right, and so that's your command, sudo space apt-get slash install live wine. This is a program that's gonna allow us to run the executable on Linux. Enter Kali for the password. That's gonna install, yes. And see, we have a few more things to do. And so last night, so hopefully I'll be able to do this and we'll get past all the things I ran to. The second command is right here. It's sudo space db kg dp, dp d is in dog, p is in power, kg, uh, space dash dash add space, I'm oh, sorry, add dash architecture space i386. Hope you can see it because I did a terrible job of saying that. All right, that command is run successfully, that's good. So once you do that, update the packages, you gotta go to the next step. You've uh, updated the package, you updated this, this DP uh, KG command, updated the architecture. I'm not gonna even pretend to understand all what that architecture command does. Uh, but once again, I'm still learning too. Okay, all right, that wasn't too bad. So roughly about a minute. So our next command is we wanna install Wine32. All right, here's the command sudo space apt dash get slash install wine32. This is the actual program that we're gonna use to run the executable. All right, and so once again, make sure it's important that you do sudo 
make sure you have the proper permissions to do all to install the programs in all the different places. Some places require root permission to do so. That took a while. Now that we've finished installing Wine, we should be able to execute the file. So I'm going to clear my screen and let's see if we can Wine EasyPass.exe. Give it just a second. Now it's still opening right here. You see it right there. And there it is. So here's the actual executable now running on Windows. And so we enter there and it shows wrong password. So how do we find the password? Well, that's what we're going to do in the next step. We're going to actually go inside the executable. We're going to leave that open and running. And we're going to go ahead and open a new tab. And we're going to install a second program that's going to allow us to, to decompile the executable and find the password that's hidden inside. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and install another program called Ollie. Okay, and this is uh, something that I learned the other night on the fly in the Twitch stream. Once again, definitely follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash technology underscore interpreters. All right, Ollie was a quick, quick install. And so now we're gonna run Ollie and I'm gonna run this with sudo. And we need to change directory. So I'll go to downloads, easy, easy pass. All right, so assuming that you follow me in the tutorial and how I created the folder in the downloads folder called Easy Pass. Now, with that being the case, we're going to go ahead and run sudo Ollie DBG. I see that didn't. So O L L Y D B G. Okay, Ollie DBG Easy Pass.exe. Give this a second. This is going to open up. And then we're going to work through the process of actually opening the executable. I do need to close this. So I'm going to close that program. Make sure you do that. Wine is right there. And give wine just a second to close because we're going to open this in Ollie now. All right. So for here, delete all libraries uh, if necessary. I'm just going to choose yes. Disregard the error messages and then go to file open. Now, when you have wine running, you may have multiple directories here. So you may have to find your Linux directory. So that's why I closed wine. Because if not, Wine will actually give you a Windows-like structure that you can see right here. So look at that. There's a C drive. That's all part of Wine. And actually, closing Wine doesn't take this away. So these are not the directories you want to go. So what I found is the last one is typically your Linux directory. And so we need to navigate through the process. So it's um, Z colon home Cali um, downloads, easy pass, and easy pass.exe. Going to open that up. All right, now that we have this open, I'm going to make this bigger so that we can see this. And so our next step is we need to do a search. So we're going to search for all reference strings. So I'm going to right click, search for, and choose all referenced text strings. And when that opens up, we're going to maximize this so you can see it. Actually, I think I'm not going to maximize this. I'm going to bring it down. This is going to be hard to see. I don't know if I can zoom, Let's see if it allows me to zoom in. Yeah, I don't think so. I'll try a couple of things. I'll try control plus that's up and down shift alt. Yeah, I can't zoom. So you're going to have to just listen carefully on this one or look very carefully on your or screen. So what we're searching for is we're searching for ASCII strings and in particular, see if we can go do a control find. We're looking for the one that says, good job, congratulations. The reason we're looking for this is, in theory, and I'm and this is, let's talk about the mindset for a little bit. Good job, congratulations is what the program returns if you successfully complete it and give it the correct answer, okay? So that's why it's important that we find that part of the program. So now that we know it's here, we're gonna go ahead and double click on good job, congratulations, and that's gonna open it up and we're going to be inside this the main thread module easy pass now once again this is a beginner tutorial and i'm very new to this so i'm just showing you step by step what i know at this point in time now so there is the we still want to find this so here's the good job and what you're looking for is this jump command okay and so this is my understanding of this, and for those of you that are more experienced, if you're watching the video, this has something to do with the input, okay? That's going to go into this command that's going to determine what's going to happen. 
So what we're gonna do is gonna right click on this command and we're gonna go to breakpoint and we're gonna to toggle on breakpoint. This will turn red. What that means is that when I run the program, I'm pressing this, it's gonna stop at that point and I'm gonna be able to find out what the information is, what the input is that's going into the variable. This is how you decompile software. This is basic, basic stuff. This is very complicated. So I click the play button at the top, or at least this is not complicated, but the process itself of decompiling programs and software is very complicated. So I'm gonna put something in there that's really easy to see. So instead of putting that, I'm gonna put like all A's, okay? And then I'll click check password. And so what happens is it did, it stopped the program. So it didn't fully execute. The reason it didn't fully execute is because it stopped at that breakpoint. We toggled it on and held that. So now we get a chance to see the value that is actually going into this J N Z command. I don't know machine language very well. I know a little bit. So, but what I do know is in our program in the bottom left hand corner here, the next thing is I want to look for the value of the jump command. So what I'm searching for is I entered all A's. It took me a while to figure that I don't know how the, to tell you the easy way to get it, but I had to search through the, the feedback here to find my text. And so what I was able to do is I searched through the documents. And once again, I wish I knew a quicker way to tell you to find this, but it's in this bottom right hand pane. If you did everything exactly the way I did, and you see this ASCII string. So this is the ASCII string for me. And it shows that I entered all A's. That's why I said choose something that's easy to see. In theory, I might even enter more A's. I might make twice the, or triple the size to make that line stand out. And so what happens is I see that's what my input is. And I know right before this, this information, the, the, the password is actually hard coded into the program. And so even though I enter some text, um, it has to match what the password is or it has to match against this hard coded ASCII password to see if it's correct. And if I scroll down just two or three lines, you see that there is the ASCII line called Fortran. See that? That is the password that we're looking for. So what we want to do at this point, we want to enter this into the box and see if that works. So let me make this big again and let's see if I can get them both on the screen at the same time. All right. So Fortran, and by the way, most of you, I don't know if you know, Fortran is actually a programming language. So I'm going to play the program to go to the next level. Okay. So now I'm past that break point. I'm going to enter F O R T R A N exclamation point and click check password. And it's going to capture that again. I'm going to hit the play button to move beyond it and good job. Congratulations and congratulations to you all. You just successfully decompiled malware for the first time. So I'm going to try to do everything I can to complete everything on Hack the Box that they will allow me to create tutorials on. So if this video was helpful, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips and tutorials and not to mention great videos on just how to get a job in cybersecurity or how to progress in the career in cybersecurity. Thank you so much for watching. See you on Twitch, technology underscore interpreters. Connect with me on Twitter, KW Infosec, uh, or even on LinkedIn. You can find me anyway. I'm sure you will. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.